What's going on, everybody? My name is Cassidy Haynes, owner of Bodyslam.net, and welcome to another installment of our special GCW Road to Hammerstein interview series. And I am here with the current GCW ultraviolet champion, who is also a three-time tournament of survival winner. Let's see. Let me go through your accolades here. You're also what, a two-time, <laughs> two-time H2O heavyweight champion, the unsanctioned yeah. pro hardcore champ. You got all the right. You run through some rock star pro, it looks like. You got yeah. four- Four-time trios, two-time tag, tag champ, and their champ. Yeah. And you got all types of stuff, man. I could sit here oh, yeah. and keep going, man. But, man, it's nice. Alex Cologne, nice to talk to What's you. What's going man. on, man? How you doing? doing? Doing good, man. Doing good. I uh, Actually, it's funny. I've told a story twice now on this series about you. And we actually met for a brief second backstage at uh, Fight Club Weekend. You were coming through and you were looking for somebody. You're like, does anybody have wet naps? I was like, oh, shit, I do. I have them in my backpack. And I always keep wet naps in my backpack. And I went looking around. I didn't have them. I took them out because I left them at the hotel because we were organizing stuff. And I've been like, I am never going to not forget to have wet naps in my backpack again. (laughs) Because when I go to a show, because it's like since then, I've had to ask twice. I've been asked twice at other shows. But anybody have any wet naps? I'm like, they're important. Got them. I got them, bro. So, yeah, it's a little piece of advice that i gathered and i've soaked into my brain to be like don't ever take the wet naps out of your backpack because i never do usually anyway but i did that one day and it was the day you're walking through looking for him you know what and you're you're a great samaritan for that because i've asked jj garrett countless amounts of times if he's had baby wipes and that asshole has told me no (laughs) you my friend are a true samaritan of this uh this lifetime (laughs) yeah i mean i know i I hang out enough with the guys and i I go to enough shows where i know it's something that people usually need and i usually need them too for myself because like dude i get my hands get dirty or just get messy doing shit around wrestling so it's just a thing to have but that day i was like the one time i took him out so i'm never gonna not have him in my backpack again so (laughs) that's on you man i appreciate that thank you man (laughs) thank you but uh yeah man let's talk so you debuted uh starting in what 2007 is that right with yeah. czw yep yep man that's uh so long you long time you, ago long time ago but not as uh, so i interviewed gringo and i didn't realize he started as 2003 2005 yeah, yeah. so man you guys are some of the some of the older older vets of this that i've talked to so most of these other guys are really young so mm-hmm. you've got a lot more experience so let's talk about that um Tell me a little bit about your CZW days, because that's that's how I actually was first exposed to you, because I was followed them, you know, when I was a little bit younger. Uh, shit, me, I'm actually older than you, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So I I grew up watching CZW, so this is awesome for me to actually talk to you because I've watched you for you know shit since probably I started about 2008, 2009 is when I started okay. watching CZW. So okay, yeah, man. Uh, what was it? What was that like? Because that was where a lot of people are cut their teeth, and a lot of the stars we see today came from. So. Yeah, it was um, a lot, a lot of learning, man. Um, that you, you know, your younger years, and most wrestlers will be able to pretty much tell you the same thing. You're just wet behind the ears, and you're just trying to soak in as much knowledge as possible. I mean, the the older, the later you get into your wrestling career, I guess, um, that you just worry about different things. I guess when you're younger, you don't have too many worries, no, no concerns. Your major focus is learning. And trying to soak as much knowledge from from guys who are really uh, doing it big um, in the indie scene, or even like guys like nowadays, it's a little bit different. Guys are just even when guys are on TV, they still show up to indie to the indies mm-hmm. and like hang out and give people advice. But like when I was breaking in, if you were on TV, you were on TV. We weren't seeing you. <laughs> yeah, because there was there weren't the options like there are now. It was no, literally no. just WWE and yeah. you know a little bit of impact, but they weren't. Yeah. And yeah. it was like, yeah, good luck. So, <laughs> uh, you you would just you were just praying and soaking knowledge from guys who have been in CCW's case in the CCW locker room forever. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. you had Drew Gulak there, and at the time he wasn't really like he was still not young, but he was young enough. He had broken what two thousand five, two thousand four, yeah, so somewhere, somewhere not around too much, not too not too much, not too. Too soon before you, but yeah, no, like years. like oh five, I think I want to say oh five, maybe a little bit earlier, but around then. So yeah, like Drew Gulak there, and and obviously B Boy was around for a while. Um, Ruckus was a big one. Joker was a big one. Uh, Sabine AK Black G's mm-hmm. another guy who really helped out a lot in my training. Um, then obviously DJ was there. John Dahmer, if you know John Dahmer, mm-hmm. is he's been in CZW since the inception. 
Um, and I just, I got the chance to learn under a lot of those guys. Sammy Callahan was another guy yeah. who I travel around with a lot. We're, we're really good friends. So um, when he showed up, when he first showed his face, I got to learn a lot from him um, in many aspects. Um, so I, I really, those years in CCW was more of a learning curve. Um, you know, it, it took a while for me to get to the point that I am now where it's like, I'm a little bit more carefree, but I was mm. so on edge those days. Cause you're just, you're a young guy in a company that was at the time, I guess, one of the bigger independent companies. So everything you did was being watched under a microscope, you know, yeah. and fans back then, I feel like we're maybe a little bit harsher than they are now. Now fans are really accepting for the most part. But uh, back then, it's like any little mess up, and the fans would let you know. Yeah, and that, you would have that, to fight and claw your way to a good spot, at least when it comes to uh, a fan's eyes. And th- for me, that took forever. Uh, as you would know, I've been around mm-hmm. for 15 years, and it took until recently being in GCW to actually finally, I guess, get some of my due, so to speak. But I mean, that's for yeah. a lot of guys like me, Joe Gacy, yeah. people like that. So mm-hmm. I mean, you know. No, and that's that's what's uh, great about this uh, about GCW right now is the exposure is given to a lot of people that have deserved and should have had been exposed to such a broader audience but haven't had the chance to yet. And um, that's kind of what I'm doing here is I want people to actually I want, I'm trying to expose people to more different parts of these GCW too because you know what you you do the uh, ultra violent and the hardcore the deathmatch stuff is it's not for everybody. But I I love it and I enjoy it. And the way that GCW does it, I feel is the right way because it's not just there for just the, the, the sake of being just blood and stuff. You actually tell stories with it and actually carries through and it's, it's, it's got a purpose and it's not done just for, just for the gimmick of just having that on your card. And no, I really expect and admire what you guys do. And I was talking to Akira earlier and just some of the deathmatch wrestlers I think are probably some of the better wrestlers in the entire world because you have the safety that you guys have to do with this with each other is just incredible to trust each other and to be able to do what you do and not, you know, <laughs> so it's terrible, terrible injuries. You know, it's, it's amazing. So kudos to you guys, man. It is. Uh, yeah. Right. It's very dangerous. So it's incredible. I, I like ugh, watching you guys, I'm always like, Oh, I get, I get nervous just watching. I'm like, Oh my God, please. I get nervous <laughs> and I'm in the match. I couldn't imagine. <laughs> I couldn't imagine, bro. I couldn't imagine just being out there doing some of that stuff. It's insane. But you had a big weekend, uh, but this weekend too, like mm-hmm. last weekend, excuse me. Um, yeah. It, yeah. The last three, four weekends that GCW has run, you've been right there at the end of the night, uh, headlining the show. So from yeah. the Murdoch, Let's talk about them. Let's start with the Murdoch match. Okay. Uh, that was, man, that was a fucking war, bro. What? Um, tell because a lot of people didn't. Really, a lot of a lot of people I've talked to didn't really know the backstory for that match because like they, the commentary was trying to fill you in a little bit. But what led up to that and uh, explain to that match and how what that meant to you going into that that night there to kind of get that rivalry and that feud uh, capped off. I mean, we could we could deep dive into it so. <laughs> As you know, I do a podcast for uh, mm-hmm. GCW World of Deathmatch, right. mm-hmm. and um, I that's I on the studied, Patreon, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we're we're talking a while ago. I want to say last year, at some point, maybe even before last year. Um, I jokingly made a comment where I called uh, John Murdoch a bridesmaid. And he took real offense to it. No, literally, he took real offense to it. And maybe he'll deny it. Yeah. Like, oh, I don't, I'm good. He took offense to it. Yeah. Um, and the people, I guess, who were really big uh, supporters of him took offense to it as well. And it just beca- became kind of like this little snidey thing where where obviously we were on two separate shows. Uh, you know, yeah. I've worked for ICW in the past, but I mean, you know, I had my yeah, moment where I was kind of done and, and doing GCW mm-hmm. solo and he was doing ICW. So then a lot of people would do the what ifs. At, what if Alex wrestled John? Because I was the deathmatch guy, I guess, per se, in GCW. He's the deathmatch guy in ICW. And then you add those comments into it, and there becomes like this heated rivalry. And we never really said much of two words to each other at that point. So that's kind of where that whole thing came from. And it only escalated. I guess people got into his head. He felt the need to go on shows and call me out after shows and make big spectacles. And I'm not... A, I'm not a big spectacle guy until you anger me. And then that's when it's like, like when you see when we wrestled for the first time. I was going to say, it looked, it looked that, pretty heated, Barrow. When, yeah. When you anger me, that's just the things that happen. <laughs> so I'm like, I let it, I let it slide. I let it slide. I'm like, who needs, who needs to make a big deal out of this? Uh, eventually, obviously I knew we were going to eventually tangle at some point in life. Um, and we did. And then that's when 
you know, I, I guess I feel like I got my revenge back, which, you know, his the so, people on his side will say other things. But mm-hmm. at the end of the day, like I say, if you're a grown man and another man's constantly calling you out and making little remarks, uh, you're going to eventually take offense to it and you're going to settle it your way. So, you know, I took it into my own hands and it, I mean, it got kind of violent. So it, it, that's a way to phrase it. It got kind of violent. That was, yeah. uh, yeah, I think I tweeted, I was like, there's so much blood. Like it was insane, man. That was, that was a wild match. I, uh, and then, uh, so Akira, uh, he was in, in the middle of that. He was in the middle of you guys. Uh, mm-hmm. What uh, What are your thoughts on that? What's What do you think about Akira? Because I talked to him earlier, man. He had nothing but good things to say about you. Yeah, he's a he's a good guy. I like him a lot. Uh, what um, What was the storyline there? Because I didn't really, you know, Kevin Gill was trying to fill it in on us a little bit, but for most people that don't follow, they really didn't know what was going on. What was his involvement between the two? He he uh, was kind of like the uh, the guy in the middle of the story there. Yeah, unfortunately, that is that's the truth. He's the guy in the middle. Um, you know, I'm Akira from what Akira says, I'm someone that, that kind of like influenced him to get Mm -hmm. into the style because before he saw me wrestling June Kasai, he was more so I'll stick to the wrestling route, which I could completely understand because I've been down that road. He uh, talked about that earlier. Yeah. He told me about that for 10 years and finally doing death matches. I kind of understand where he's coming from. Um, and Danny Havoc was kind of what I am to him, to me, you know, so I can understand his view, but then you have, his his uh relationship with John is kind of like a father son where it's like someone who's mentored him and has shown him a, a lot of the ropes in the business um has helped him out a lot and then you got me somebody who he also sees as another mentor who's who's kind of influenced him uh to be who he is so then you have these two separate entities who don't like each other it's mom and dad mom and dad don't like right? each other mom and dad were fighting and a poor kid Akira who loves both of them is, is stuck in the middle he doesn't know what to do it so was great. My thing is, at some point, you have to choose, and if you don't choose, I'm going to choose for you, and that's what you've seen at uh yeah. at the GCW show where me and Murdoch wrestle each other. I just basically chose for him. You did. It was awesome. Um, and then that led into you had a uh, this week you had Harpo's last weekend, and mm-hmm. that so you defended your belt against Hoodfoot, yes. and that was his debut with GCW as well, right? Yes, he wrestled I think JCW, but yeah, that was his yeah. GCW debut. That what what was what was it like going to that venue? Uh, that was a real famous venue as well, and that's something that GCW does. They go to these unique and special buildings, and I was looking forward to seeing what it looked like on camera because I've seen seen some videos and pictures of the building. But uh, what was it like wrestling there? And uh, talk a little bit about your match with Hoodfoot. Dude, I like I really like that venue. I feel like it's different. It's like it's old. It's listen. It's the old shitty concert ven- venue, right? But it's amazing. It's the most amazing old shitty concert venue because it's just, it's got aesthetics. Mm-hmm. Um, it just, it looks like exactly where Guns N' Roses would have played in 1991. <laughs> it does. It's, it doesn't uh, look like it's changed. Like they did it's, the same paint. looks like it's no, on the wall. Bro, too. it's yeah. the same shit. Uh, I got to go a, a lot of, to a lot of the backstage areas. Um, their VIP area was pretty badass. Not too many people got, got to see that, but I uh, got the chance to uh, chop it up with the owner for a very oh, split cool. second. And he took me and uh, Schlack upstairs uh, to check out the VIP room, which was really awesome. Um, you know, I like the building, dude. I think it's – I think Detroit – Cardona said Detroit's a B-town, and he constantly would harp that. But, like, that show proved that Detroit might be an A-town, man. Like, Dude, that was a hot crowd, man. They were dude, all the, the crowd all in. The look of the building, I feel like the whole look and the feel itself was like, dude, this show is awesome. Yeah. Um, and then obviously I got to wrestle Hoodfoot, who at the time I really didn't know much about. Um, I watched a couple of his matches, and unfortunately, his matches that he's had really hasn't done justice to what he proved in that match. Like a lot of the stuff I watched was basically more so kick punch, um, very yeah. minimalist. I was going to um, say the same thing, man, because I hadn't. I was only exposed to him from that video, I guess, where he was just bleeding profusely, yeah. and that was my first real exposure to him. And then I've seen some stuff since then, but I didn't really get to actually see him work a full like match and actually wrestle. You know what I mean? And like you were saying, like, that, yeah, he surprised me. It was honestly, yeah. it was a very, it was a good match. Like not just a a death match, but like an actual good wrestling match with inside of a death match too. So it was. Mm-hmm. But uh, you guys are coming back too. What? Next month is it February? I think so, if I'm not mistaken. And I think I honestly think they're going to draw more people because I just, just that whole situation Mm -hmm. was just so awesome. I think that it's only going to draw more people to make 
the uh, trip to come out to Harpo's because I think Harpo's is an awesome venue for GCW to, to really be yeah. placed in. No, it fits. It seems like it's very much on brand with GCW's brand too. It's the whole fit, the atmosphere just is perfect you know, fit for you guys. I really liked it. Uh, and then that led into uh, your return to Chicago. Yeah. And uh, that was a big night because that was the, you guys did the Marcus Crane, the 666. Uh, yeah. I forget the wording of it exactly, but his memorial match or whatever. And that was, uh, it ended up being Nate, Nate Webb work. That was supposed to be Schlack, right? Yeah. Yeah, it got uh, – I don't know if Schlack's made uh, comments or whatever, but uh, for whatever, it's his own reasoning yeah, or whatever. But, but he couldn't make it, so Nate Webb ended up stepping mm -hmm. up. Uh, unfortunately, uh, at the beginning of the match, Nate Webb took a dragon on his mm -hmm. head, and it completely sent him out. Yeah, out. yeah I saw he, Brett he updated that he was okay, though, right? Yeah, he's okay, yeah. but he scared the shit out of everybody because he couldn't move at all, period. Yeah, um, I, I kind of saw that for a second. I was like, oh, shit, is he okay? And I, I messaged somebody and asked, and then I saw the update before I got a response back. But, yeah, that was a scary little situation yeah. there. But It put a damper on a situation, but like I explained to him, because he was really down about it, because we did really have a lot of wild things planned for that match. That's what I was going to say. Did it change that? How you had Because you did a good job play, uh, calling it on the fly, you know, you guys finishing it up without him being yeah. – being involved because i knew that there was probably so many spots that you couldn't work through now because it was just you two of you instead yeah but uh that was i mean again you like you've been featured right there at the closing out the show for the last few uh events so what's it mean to you going into uh next weekend uh, you're in the you're in the grab the brass ring mm -hmm. battle so what's that talk let's talk about that man that's a big opportunity for you at yeah. hammerside too which is dude that's that building is insane that's that's I the know. biggest and what you guys have done to sell out that building in what two days and some change with no matches announced and to set the record for uh, people to come watch wrestling in that building is going to be, it's a big deal, man. So let's talk about what that means to you to be in this match in that building, you know, on this night. It means, it means everything. And I honestly feel like our match is the GCW match. Like mm -hmm. there's a lot of matches on the show, but like that's the one match that to me has the most GCW regular talent in it. And guys who really, at the, I feel like there's a lot of fire lit under some of the guys' asses because mm -hmm. a, a bunch of us feel like, man, we should have been uh, marqueed, you know, so yeah. to speak. So uh, a lot of us, me, Jimmy, Depp, Oliver, even Leo, PCO, we're all going to go out there and be like, all right, we're going to show you guys why you should have had us in the big singles matches on this show. So I think it's going to be a crazy match. And to me, it's just, dude, it's super important. Like I, I personally never thought, I would have ended up in the situation to uh, be in Hammerstein because, you know, for the longest time, Hammerstein's mm -hmm. like ECW territory or uh, Ring of Honor is running Hammerstein. When are you going to see a place like GCW with with, with someone like me? <laughs> someone like <laughs> me on the show. Exactly, scary. because that's that's what I was wondering, too, before they made the announcement. I was like, damn, you know, because you primarily work death matches for yeah. the company. So I was like, damn, you know, they can't really do with those the athletic commission and stuff. I'd be able to do the glass and all the death match stuff. Yeah. So I was wondering where, you know, if they'd find a spot and where it would be. And when I saw that, I was like, Oh, that's fucking awesome. Cause now you yeah. get to wrestle and not just be like, you know, get to show you get to, you get to show everybody what you can do. But really it's going to be fun. I'm super excited about that match. Like that's like you said, that's the GCW match on the card. I think too. I agree. I think it's, the, I think it's the, not just the sleeper. I think it's going to be like, I want, I'm ready for all of us to steal the show. <laughs> yeah. Literally. And it's a huge weekend in general too, because the night before you guys are going to be the end of, GCW is doing the uh, Independent Wrestling Hall of Fame. And you mm -hmm. mentioned uh, Ruckus earlier, and he's getting yeah. inducted. Yep. And, um, yeah, it's just a big night. Are you going to be there for that? Are you going to be? I will, okay. yes. Yes. Okay. I'm flying up for the whole weekend. I'll be there Friday through Monday. No, Tuesday. So I am I made the whole weekend up, so I'll be there as well. So I'll look for you. But, yeah, that's uh, – what does that mean to you? Because, you, like you said, you try, you started at CZW under him. So how's it? what's it feel like to uh, see somebody that you – you know, grew up or started the business under make it uh, the Hall of Fame for yeah. You know. He's somebody who deserves it, man. Um, right. You know, uh, when you had when junior heavyweight wrestling was just kind of like in its inception when it comes to indies, mm -hmm. like Ruckus was one of those first guys. You had Ruckus, Trent Acid. You had right. Reckless Youth. You had, I mean, Quack. I think was still was trotting at that time. You had a bunch mm -hmm. of of guys who were really trying to make the junior heavyweight scene on the Indies. And Ruckus was one of those guys. And he was a big dude. 
He was yeah. one of the first big dudes you ever seen doing backflips and and four fifties and shooting star presses. No big guy was doing that before Ruckus. Uh-huh. Plain and simple. Um, so like he's an innovator, man, and a pioneer. He deserves it. It's it's just crazy to see him there. Another guy that's being inducted, homicide, a guy I look right. I look up to. It's like those two guys, I feel like those two guys are two dudes that that literally helped mold who I am. And it, it's just wild to be able to see them to get the recognition that they properly deserve. Yeah, yeah. Hom- that's a big weekend for Homicide, is being that he, he gets inducted in the Hall of Fame on Saturday and has a chance to win the the world title on mm-hmm. Sunday night. I mean, it could be a huge weekend for him. Uh, I'd love to see it, honestly, myself. I, uh, I, I guess I'm flying up for this, man. This is a big night. I'm, I'm, I can't wait. Um, let's talk about. I got some questions here from right. some uh, some of the staff that they sent in. Um, let's just go in order. They're kind of be bouncing all over the place. But here's one: Is Bret Hart still your favorite wrestler? Yes, that's never yeah? gonna change. Listen, never gonna change. I, I met, met I met Hart stuff up here too. Dude, so that's awesome. I met I met Bret Hart once. It was not the most savory meeting, and I am still a Bret Hart fan. <laughs> that's what's up. Okay, that's what's up. All right, it's <laughs> like, <laughs> that's interesting. So He's still my favorite. I don't care if he just blew me off. He's still my favorite. <laughs> nice. Uh, let's see. Um, let's see. Yeah, what, yeah, okay. Well, we already touched on that one. Let's see. All right. You've been doing it for song. You're influencing me. Tomorrow's death match. What piece of advice do you have uh, that you want to make blood fighters of the future? Like, So what advice do you have for death match kids, the new guys like the Akiras and the, the young guys that are cutting their teeth getting into blood to death match wrestling? The easy part about deathmatch wrestling is the deathmatch part. The hard part is the wrestling part. If you can figure the wrestling part out, the deathmatch shit will come easily. A lot of guys are worried about the cool shit they can do with weapons or the weapon aspect or the blood aspect. If you think about the other shit first, you will be able to easily make what you do more unique than anything anybody else can do in that genre. That makes sense. Is there any like special preparation that goes into like getting ready for a death match? Like, did you do anything with your body to get ready? No, specifically, no. You just go it's out a there mental, and do it. It's a mental game. I feel more like. mental preparation, Men- a mental physical. and and uh, uh, tolerating pain, mental and pain toleration. I think is the the main two with it. Yeah. Um. Let's see here. We got another one. Let's see, uh, New York doesn't. Okay, no. I think we already touched on that one. Uh, do you consider? Sorry, I'm, I'm very slow on checking out no, my stuff here because I realized that we had touched on so much stuff that I had written down just organically through our conversation. I'm like, oh, let me pull up some of these other people's questions, and we already did most of those too. But uh, let's just look at the future. Let's talk about that. So, what about the re- going here from here on out after Hammerstein? What's next for you? Obviously, you're going to try to grab the brass ring, but uh, what are some goals that you have for yourself in GCW or just in general for uh, that you hope to see the company have like from here on out? Cause everything changes after Sunday, honestly, yeah. because you're on, you're on pay-per-view real pay-per-view, not just yeah. high pay-per-view. So like, what do you think is next for you or for the company just in general? For the company, um, just more eyes on them. And it's crazy to say that because they already have so many eyes on them, mm-hmm. but I feel like so many people on television are paying attention to what GCW is doing right now talent i've seen i've seen people who are on tv right now at our shows i've seen backstage personalities that that have to do with tv presences that are on at the backstage of our shows so it's like a lot of people are really starting to take notice at gcw and i mean you can only grow from here is that always a good thing sometimes not we've seen that with ecw like it Mm -hmm. was growing and it ended up becoming a hindrance but with gcw if they if they do it properly you know, and they don't completely forget about, you know, some of the guys that are GCW guys and, and stray far away from that, mm-hmm. then they'll be fine. They'll just continue to grow in the in-ring aspect. Uh, fan aspect, you can only get bigger. The only way that's going to mess up is if financials get crazy. And from what I've learned, GCW does things properly. So, yeah, they should true. be good to go. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you've been there, like you said, since like, was it 2017? So you've, you've, uh, yep, seen, yep. you've seen all this growth. So, um How's that had? How do you feel like? Talk. Let's talk about the growth. Like, so you've right. been there since the beginning and the small to where we're going now. So, how does yeah. uh, what's it like seeing this? You know, firsthand, and has it had? It, what? Do you, how do you feel like this has had an impact on the deathmatch scene too? Because this has created so much more attention. Like I said, for deathmatch wrestling that might have not had it before. Um, 
do you, do you contribute that to anything? Does that make sense to you? Does, do you see that elsewhere outside of GCW because of what they've been able to do? It's a world. I think it's a whirlwind of everything. Um, you have all the exposure it's getting, the uh, the new towns it's constantly going to, or new cities it's constantly in, the different countries we've reached, um, mm-hmm. talent like Cardona coming in, I feel like brought a lot of like non indie, non deathmatch fans mm-hmm. to be like, oh, what's this death? This deathmatch stuff's cool. And then, then next thing you know, I'm getting all these followers on IG and Twitter who normally wouldn't be fans of indie or deathmatch wrestling. Yeah. And now they're just fans of both because they just found this new thing. And, you know, us being former fans, or mm-hmm. I'm still a fan of wrestling, I still watch Same. wrestling, but like us being fans of wrestling, we can understand finding like, yeah. Uh, when I found CZW, it was like, oh my God, it like blew my freaking mind. And Same. I became an instant, like instant, as they call Mark, an instant Mark for, th- for the stuff. And, you know, there's people who are just finding it now who didn't know anything but WWE or AEW. Mm-hmm. Um, You know, so there's just that whole thing. I just feel like GCW is on the up and up, man. I don't see it coming down. And uh, it's, uh, it's all just good stuff from here on out. It's, yeah, I've, I've talked about this. About with, I've talked about this with a lot of other people too that I've uh, spoke with on the roster. It's amazing to me that you guys basically are because Jeff Jarrett will be on the show yeah. Sunday. That you're basically doing his model that he had for TNA when he started better than he is. You know what I mean? Because he did weekly pay per views, and you're pretty much running weekly. You're doing what forty shows this oh, next year? So that's yeah. yeah, like forty out of fifty two. So you're pretty much weekly, if not bi weekly at least. It, so. I mean, it's it's almost the same business model. Just like let's just run pay per views and you know get our audience that way. And you're doing it, you know, obviously pretty much as successful, if not more successful than he did it, and for making probably more money too because it's just incredible. But um, another question people had is if you could book any, if you could have any match with anyone, it doesn't even have to, like who would it be? It doesn't it can be current uh, that you've already wrestled or just somebody that's a dream match that you wish you could wrestle? Is there somebody that, that's on that list or a couple of? Couple matches that you wish you could have. It could be death match, non death match, anything. Just some dream matches you you want. I don't. I don't really know. I mean, you brought the question up earlier about goals, and we. I mean, yeah. I didn't really touch too much into that, but like, I think that falls under just goals. Like, uh, I don't. I've wrestled. Literally, I've wrestled Jun Kasai, who I feel like is probably the greatest death match wrestler ever. Right, him and Matsunaga are right there. Um, and I've wrestled Masashi Takedo. I feel like is the yeah. current best death match wrestler. You know, and and then honestly, I've been in the ring with Shane Strickland. I've been in the ring with John Grisham. Mm-hmm. I've been in the ring with dudes who are on WWE. I've been in the ring with guys who are in AEW. I've been in the ring with people from Japan and England. So like, uh, I, don't, I don't really, to me, like fifteen years in, I don't see goals as wrestling specific people. I see like, how can I test myself? How can I make myself excited? And that might not fall under a specific name. Like, yeah, I'd uh, love to wrestle. a a John Moxley or, you know, somebody like that, I guess that has a real huge name, not because it's wrestling them because I've been in the ring with Moxley before back, back, back in the day. But like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But like, uh, it's more like just the feeling I get from being in the ring with somebody who has such a presence, you know, and it knowing that it could help elevate me to another level. Like I just, that's, that's a goal for me, not wrestling a specific name, but, the feeling that I could get from wrestling somebody, you know, that's probably my favorite answer that I've had from that question. Cause that's a question we always throw out there to people. And that's definitely my favorite answer. I've gotten back. I love that answer, man. Um, man, I think we touched on everything. Let's just talk a little bit more about Hammerstein and what, uh, tell me what they can expect to see out of you this Sunday, man. Uh, me. Tell wild, what wildness, get. wildness. The, the, the problem is most people see my stuff and they're all like, yeah, oh, Alex, if there's no blood involved, you're not going to see much or we're going to go crazy. Like uh, I have my, my list of shit that I've done is, is pretty deep. Um, I've been in the ring with some of their favorite wrestlers. So it's not like, I don't know what I'm doing in there. It's just like, how crazy can we get without having the athletic commission <laughs> shut us down? Right? Oh man. Yeah, I so that's wait. the goal. No, that, that's the goal for my match. How crazy can we get without having the athletic commission shut our match down? Um, and hopefully it doesn't scare GCW management because they're probably like, oh shit, right now. But <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> sure that fine. I'm sure you I'm sure they're having to deal with that on a couple of people's matches. That's probably stuff they've got in mind. Like you have to tell everybody, all right, guys, like we can't <laughs> yeah, I, I <laughs> we'll expect, get us kicked out of New York. I expect binoculars from from the commission on us because they're looking at GCW like, oh, it's that deathmatch promotion. Mm-hmm. They do all this crazy 
crazy stuff, cause riots and stuff. Um, they're like, they're probably gonna be watching us with probably. binoculars. So uh, I'm pretty sure Brett's gonna be a, a stress case that day. Yeah, I was gonna say he's gonna be he's gonna be very worked up and stressed out. I'm, he's not gonna be smiling. He's gonna be frowning, frowning yeah. Brett. But he's gonna be like, please, please don't ruin this. That's what I'm expecting man, to hear. I can't wait for this weekend. You'll see. You'll probably hear me screaming. I'm sure you'll see me all over the place, man. But uh, thank you for doing this. I really appreciate no it. Uh, tell everybody where they can find you. Plug all your stuff if you got some merch to plug. Yeah. If you all your social media. Oh, all that I, stuff. Yeah, if you hey, you want Alex Cologne merch, Deathmatch Worldwide is a place to go. You can also hit me up on the DMs if I have any physicals, but Deathmatch Worldwide is probably your better place to go. Um, catch me on Twitter at AlexCologne0139 or on uh, IG at AlexCologne003. Um, I'm barely on Facebook, so good luck with that. But, uh, yeah, those are the two platforms you could probably catch me posting on. Um, other than that, you know, I can't wait to see everybody in Hammerstein. It's going to be wild. Man, that's what's up, man. I really appreciate it, dude. Uh, you guys can follow me um, right here on Twitter. It's uh, at Casshole, C-A-S-S-H-O-O-O-L-E. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, the same thing. Facebook, the same thing. Uh, and I'll, make sure you follow Bodyslam.net for wrestling news. We got podcasts dropping daily. We got results, editorials, all that good stuff. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you haven't yet, uh, give this video a thumbs up as well. And well, this is also up on all of our audio platforms as well. So if you don't like watching your podcast in video form, search for us on whatever audio device you have. And Alex, man, I really appreciate you doing this for me. I will see you this weekend. Yes, uh, good luck. And I hope you get that brass ring, man. And I will see you, uh, see everybody soon, man. Thanks again. See sure. you guys. Thank you. Bye. And we are.